Hi everybody, I am Rachel Cooper and I am talking to you from the virtual Benedetti sessions and I am so excited, it's just so exciting and I know that many of you have signed up for Violin 2 Intermediate and that is just so exciting because I think we're going to have a lot of fun together. So um, I'm Rachel Cooper, you may know me from um, other tutorials we've done and other sessions that we've, we've been doing over the year in other parts of the country, um, but I welcome you because I know that there are lots of people from all over the world watching these tutorials and it is just so wonderful to have you with us, so welcome. Uh, before we get start, I wanted to just check, have you seen the warm-up videos that we have been doing? Um, the warm-up videos are just so useful. They are brilliant at setting you up, ready for your practice. They're brilliant to um, help you with certain uh, technical things and difficulties. So please go and have a look. Use the link that's below and go and have a look at the warm-ups that the team have produced for you guys. So um, the other thing I want you to uh, think about before we get going is have you printed out your music? Yes. So we are today going to look, this tutorial is going to look at Matachins from the Capriol Suite, which is this one here. Now I'm hoping that you've all printed this out ready. If you haven't, no worries, or if you're using an iPad, great. Um, but either way, if you haven't, maybe pause the video now, go and print it or get it ready in front of you because all that I will be talking about is in the music. Fantastic. So um, what I'd like to use this session for is to familiarise ourselves with this piece of music. I want us to look at what's there. It's very easy sometimes to jump straight into the music and then get really worried about what we can't do. We, 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 we start playing it at the speed we've heard it played at and we think, ah, it's just too much. So let's break it down. Let's familiarise our, familiarise ourselves with the music first before we get cracking, okay? So more than anything, I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy these sessions. I don't want you to be anxious or worried. I want you to have fun and enjoy learning something that possibly you haven't learned before. So let's have a little think first of all, please, about Matachins. Now it says in brackets at the top, if you look, it says sword dance. So already that conjures up lots of things in our mind about what this piece is talking about and what, what it represents. OK, so there's going to it's going to be quite lively. Yes. And um, as you'll hear as we go through and around letter or letter B, there's suddenly these clashes and discords. And it's 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 um it's a very, very, very. Um, interesting um, um, combination of sounds and I often think that that sounds like the clashing of swords and um, so that's really interesting so when we're playing this I want you to keep that in your mind it's a sword dance it's energetic it's exciting it's um, lively and it's it's got this kind of energy to it so uh, one thing before we get started in terms of playing is that we want to familiar ourselves with the basic things like what's the key signature? Okay, so in this case, the key signature is F major. Okay, now it starts off in F major quite nicely. Then we have this crazy discordant middle section that is kind of jumps around a bit in different keys. And then we end again in F major. So it's worth before the Zoom session on Tuesday just to familiarize yourself with F major. So we'll do a little bit of that in a minute. We'll play an F major scale and stuff, but play some F major scales with different bow strokes, getting yourself ready for the Zoom session. The other thing we want to have a little, little look at is the tempo. Now it's Allegro con brio, which is, is fairly quick, okay? Um, and, but above anything, don't look at Allegro and go, oh, it means fast, okay? It means lively, which is a different thing. So don't panic about the speed because we're not going to start at a million miles an hour. We're going to start at a slow tempo and we're going to build it up. OK, so the next thing to think of, of course, is the length of the piece. It is so short. 
This piece lasts just over a minute. We did a recording for it and it was just over a minute. So, you know, there isn't a lot to learn here apart from the fact that there are lots of little things that we need to make sure we're doing well because we're not heard for that long. So let's make what we do play sound brilliant. Now, the structure of this piece, um, I've kind of already spoken about, um, but the texture starts by, by, by starting off with the cellos, okay? And then it builds up and some more instruments join, violin one, violin two, some cello, and then the bass joins in at letter A. So it builds very gradually, okay? And then you've got this full discordant texture, okay? Right up to the end and it finishes with this big chord at the end. Um, so it's important at this point, before we get cracking, is to also recognise where the tricky bits are. Where are the tricky bits in this piece? OK, and there are some tricky bits. OK, and I just want you to be aware of where they are so that you can just slowly and methodically work through them with me. OK, and then we can put them in context. OK, so what I've done and what I'm really suggesting that you do before you do the session tomorrow on Zoom is that you get yourself a highlighter, okay? And what you do is you highlight which, do you see, where it says divise, it means you play either the top line or the bottom line. You decide, okay? I don't mind which one you do, that's no problem at all. But whatever you do, see, if I was playing the bottom line, I've highlighted it in blue, all my notes are in blue, so that I can see clearly which notes I'm playing. OK, likewise, if you're playing the top line, maybe do it in a different colour. Now, if you see the yellow is non divise. So technically, you should all play both notes during this time. But I don't mind. If you want to play just one note, that's fine. I'd rather have one note really in tune than two notes that are a bit fluffy and not so in tune. So, so you decide. But if you want the challenge, fantastic. Great. And I will be teaching this. OK, and working through that a bit later, a bit sl but very slowly. OK, so that's something to think about. But I would strongly advise that you do this so that you can see clearly which line you're playing. Now, I'm dyslexic, so that means I struggle with reading and I find it really complicated when there is lots of notes on the page and I have to separate it out from, from myself. So this is why I've done this, because I struggle with that. So make it as easy for yourself as you possibly can, okay? So this is all preparation for your Zoom sectional tomorrow, okay? The next thing is to be aware of the bowing, okay? Now, I'm hoping this will have been sent to you with the right bowings in, so you will have put in all the bowings that you need, okay, so that there's no confusion over that at all. Amazing. OK, so next I want to start by introducing the instruments. So I want to start talking about the bow and the right arm. OK, and what we want in terms of bow stroke for matachins. So what I'd like to look at, please, is first of all, if you've seen my um, warm up videos, which I'm hoping you have, I talk a lot about using the natural weight of the arm and feeling really, really settled in the strain. OK, now what I'd like you to do is make sure if you're sitting, that's fine. No problem at all. Just make sure that you're sat with your feet flat on the floor. You're feeling like you're being pulled up to the ceiling. OK, and that you're sat on your sitting bones. If you put your hand underneath your bottom, you can feel your sitting bones. Yeah, so sit up nicely so that you're not going to get achy back. And, and also, I don't want anyone playing with a bad posture. So the bow stroke we want for matachins, OK, is this bow stroke. So we want a down bow that is not too long and two up bows, which are nice and staccato. So. OK, now what I want is that they are very much separated on the up bows, not too joined up. So. What I'd like us to do is make sure that we're staying in the lower half of the bow. Now, if anyone struggles with staying in the lower half of the bow, put a tiny bit of blue tack or something on the middle of your bow. Nothing that's going to damage the bow. But it's just something that you can see so that you know not to go past it. OK, now, if you're tense in your upper arm, you're going to find this really hard. So make sure that you're really, really relaxed in the upper arm. So if we just do this, which I do a lot in my warm ups, is just putting your shoulders up to your ears and then releasing them and up and releasing them. 
Yes, it'll be much easier to get to the lower half of the bow. So what I'd like us to do is just on an open A, I'd love us to simply go down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. Yes, should we just do like, well, let's just do a few of those. Ready, play. Very good, fantastic. Now, I spoke about the fact that we are in F major. So why don't we do an F major scale now with exactly that bowing? So starting on a low two on the D string, an F natural, we're gonna go all the way up to the E string, okay? And we're gonna go like this. Okay, ready, play. right part of the bow. I want you to really check that and make sure that you can stay in the right part of the bow because it looks so neat and the sound is so different when you do. We don't want any legato. Yeah, it's not that. We want it to sound exciting. Remember, it's a sword dance and it's lively, okay? And it's much easier to play fast like this, yes? Yeah, so keep in the lower half of the bow. Fantastic, well done. Okay, so now we're going to look a little bit at the left hand. And I just want you to be aware of some of the accidentals. So the, the notes that have a sharp or a natural or a flat written in front of them within the music. Um, now there is quite a few of them and it's really good to, be, to become familiar with what happens when. If you all look at your music now, please, and find letter B, okay? Now you'll see if you're playing the bottom line of the divise, you start with a D sharp. So I would play that with a low one on the D string. So if you want to write that in your part, great. So you're going to start on a D sharp with a low one, okay? The upper part starts on a G sharp, so a stretched three, okay? Now the other thing to watch out for is if you find one, two, three, fourth bar of letter B, you've got a G flat, uh, sorry, a D flat, okay? And you've just had C sharp two bars before. Now, C sharp and D flat are the same note, okay? So just be aware of that when you're reading it because it can be quite confusing. So maybe write that in your part to make sure that you recognise that. Um, the upper part have got a G flat in the fourth bar of, of B. So just make sure that you're, that you're uh, ready for that when it comes. So maybe put a circle around it because it's easy to, easy to miss. Now, I want you to all look, please, at one, two, three, four, five, sixth bar of letter B. Now, it looks, it's really confusing as to where that sharp is. The sharp is for the F, so it's an F sharp for the bottom divise part, okay? So don't get too confused. So the bar, that bar for the bottom line is a G and an F sharp. So, so just be aware of that, please. Um, if you go the bar before that, you start on an A flat. Sounds really weird, but that's what you're playing, the bottom divise part of playing. Um, so there, those are just a couple of things to look out for. And the same thing happens the line below. So just make sure that those things are marked in your parts. The other thing to look at also is that the last chord you need to work out whether you're playing the bottom or the top chord if you've played the top divise line for the whole way through i would advise that you play the top chord and if you've been playing the bottom divise part play the bottom chord okay and we'll look at that chord in more detail on the zoom session but just have a little look first um good so the other thing i wanted to just quickly have a little look over with you was um how to start practicing your non divise parts because the non divise can seem quite overwhelming for some and I don't want it to be. I want it to be approachable, okay? So the first thing I'd like you to do is simply practice playing on two strings because you've got to play on two strings. If you find the fourth bar of letter A where I've highlighted my music, 
yeah? We're gonna have a little look at that non divise part. So what I'd like you to do is fly your bow in, please. Now I want you to imagine that your violin is a seven stringed instrument. Sounds weird, I know, but I want you to imagine you've got an E string, a string between the E and the A, the A, a string between D and A, and a, the D string, and then a string between G and D. Now, if you imagine that, then you actually have different levels, okay? So can we go and find the string between D and G, which is the one we want for, the, for, this, for this section, okay? So I'm now looking at the fourth bar of letter A, and we're just gonna practice on open strings this. <laughs> two strings so if you just fly your bow in tip across to your G and your D string make sure you're balanced on both and we're just going to do four bars of down up up ready play <laughs> So look for your non divise bar, fourth of letter A. And we're going to play just the D string line. So we're going to go, we'll play that three on the G. Now I did the wrong bowing there, but it doesn't matter because we're looking at the left hand. Let's try it again with the right bowing. So D string, ready, and... play the G string line okay are you ready ready and okay and then you're going to put those two bits together so that it will sound eventually like this okay now I realize that it's going to take lots and lots of times to go through that so rewind the video and watch that section again and work through it with me again. It takes practice. I've had a, a, a lot of time to look at this piece over the last few weeks. So go away and have a little look. So I've just picked out a few things for you to have a look at there in the left hand. Um, so just be ready for tomorrow when we do our online session, okay? So I wanted to give you just a few general bits of advice, okay, for this week and going forward over the next three weeks. What I want you to do, first of all, is to be aware that mistakes are fine and mistakes are good and mistakes are just what everyone does all the time and that's fine. Um, I want you to start thinking of your violin practice as a science experiment, okay? We're in a laboratory and we're trying things and some things work and some things don't and that's okay. It's not right or wrong, we're just trying to experiment with things. So first of all, mistakes are okay. I want you to look at a little bit, the, the difficult sections that I've just highlighted in this piece, okay? And I want you to only look at them for a short amount of time. Do not do them for too long and get frustrated, okay? Because I will be helping you go through them in the live sectional. Um, so don't, don't allow yourself to be disheartened or disappointed, okay? And my biggest, biggest plea of you all is to go and listen to the recordings that we've done, okay? And listen to what's going on and follow along with your part. That's the best thing that you can absolutely do. That's the best thing you can do. The next thing is to do not play too fast. There is no point starting this and going in full hog and then not being able to play it because you've just been too chaotic in working. So slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, if you're getting distracted, leave and come back to it later, okay? Um, in terms of practice this week, I would love you to become familiar with your part. That's the most important thing. So listen, listen, listen. Watch my tutorial so that you can get used to what all of this means. I want you to start thinking about what this piece represents. Okay, I want you to have a go at the bowing of down, up, up, down, up, up, staying in the lower half of the bow and break it down like I've broken it down in this video. I want you to then have a look at the non divise sections and break it down like I did, starting just practicing the bowing on two strings, open strings, then just practice the top part, the bottom part, and then try and put it together. Um, 
and please post clips of your practice if you would like with the hashtag practice with Rachel so that we can see what you're up to. It would be so lovely to see how many of you are, how you are doing basically. So that would be really nice. Um, and my final thought is have fun. Please have fun and enjoy this process and remember to break it down. I am so excited to see you guys tomorrow. So get familiar with Matachins and I will see you tomorrow.